Oh uh, yeah, happy new year everybody. I hope your new year was better than mine. Yeah, apologies I haven't been about I've just been crazy busy, crazy busy. Um But yeah, I thought I'd start off with telling you all the story of my New Year's Eve and my New Year's Day, which was unbelievable. It's a New Year's Eve, gonna have a quiet New Year's Eve, watch a movie, everything's good. Just popped out for two seconds. And I have OCD about keys. I check, I stand at my front door, I check it's going to lock, and I check my key three times, at least, every time. And I've actually started worrying to myself, thinking, oh, I'm getting some type of OCD about my keys. Well, New Year's Eve. I go out on the phone to my bird, pulled the door, and it went click. And as soon as it went click, I thought, I haven't got my keys. Touch my pocket where they are. No, no, no. Searched. No. All gone. So, now it's New Year's Eve. It must have been about half eight. I'm thinking, oh God, I ain't never going to get a locksmith out of this time. So then I found somewhere, text, WhatsApp them. They come back straight away. I said, can you come and... I was like, I need it. I need to get in now, basically. Um, can you help? And they said, yeah. Give me your address, blah, blah, blah. And they got me. I got conned by a locksmith, basically. They said on the thing, 59... It would be roughly £59 for the labour. Um, but we don't know how much it's going to be until we get there. So do you want to... Do you want it or not? I said, yeah, because now I'm starting, to, I'm just stressed, do you know what I mean? I'm locked out my house, New Year's Eve. Everything was set up perfect up until that point. Uh, and it said on the website, we'll be with you within 25 to 30 minutes, £59. So I'm thinking, that's not too bad. It's not the end of the world. Well, anyway, half hour goes by, nobody. Another one, We're up to an hour now, nobody. Another hour, another half hour, get a phone call. Hello, mate, I'm at this job. I'll be over to you within half hour. So now it's two hours. That's an hour and a half longer than they said the first time. So then I'll go, all right, mate. And I'm just hanging around outside. Um, yeah, and then... <laughs> He turns up, comes over, looks at it. Oh, I can't, I can't open that. I'm gonna to have to punch a lock. That's gonna be two hundred and eighty-three pound. I'm thinking, oh fucking hell, here we go. All right, and that's not including the lock. If you want a lock put on, that's gonna be another forty. I'm thinking, fucking. He's like, and then the vat on top of that. Uh, he's like, do you want me to go ahead? It's like, well, you, I haven't got much choice, mate. I've waited for you for fucking two hours. So I was just like, at that point, I was just like, yeah, whatever. Just whatever. I knew I had some money. Well, I knew I had enough of that, but um, came to £339. And it pretty much skinted me. I was thinking, Jesus. And literally, I was just thinking, everything's sweet. I've ordered stuff from a new place, but not gone mad. So like, I'm going to save my money and then boom. £339. So that was my New Year's drama. Now the next day, where I live, I live on an estate. Uh, yeah, which to the Americans is a, a hood, basically, a neighbourhood. Um, but it's if you go down there, there's a little country road. Like it pretty much like you're half from an estate here and then it goes kind of into country but it's it's not the country but it looks like it like the roads are just narrow and that so new year's day i'm just walking around out there again on the phone to my bird i blame her it's her fault both times it's her luck um but anyway i'm standing there and we're just chatting i'm i am on the phone to her um and i'm leaning up against this lamppost and i'll see a police car pull up and I was thinking, all right, I'll get it. Like, do you know what I mean? 
it's an isolated road. What am I doing here? I understand. I understand how it works. Like, I'm not an idiot. Yeah. Um, so then, the policeman gets out of the car and he says, uh, we've had reports that someone's chasing someone with a baseball bat. Now I'm standing there. I've got a jacket on, tracksuit bottoms. And I said to him, mate, I haven't got, I haven't got a baseball bat. He just went click with some handcuffs. And I was like, what are you doing? And he went, I'm detaining you. And he went, I was like, no, you're fucking not. And he went, he's resisting. He's resist. Well, actually before that, I was like, no, you're fucking not. And I, cause I was on the phone to my bird. I was like, I'm fucking going to film you. So I went to film him. He's resisting. He's resisting. And at that point, I'm not joking. I'm about six two and I'm not little. Like, um, both of these must have been five seven. I towered over the pet like, I, and it, I'm like mean to be big headed, but if I wanted to, there was no way them two men could have arrested me. No way, no way. On, but I'm not an idiot. <laughs> as soon as he said he's resisting, he's, I was thinking, here we go. I ain't having this. He's gonna stamp all over me head or whatever, fucking for nothing, basically, because he's. Just, so I just let it go. I put my phone in my pocket and I put my hand around, around my back and I let him cuff me. Then he goes to me. And at this point now I'm fuming because this has just happened. He's basically got out of the car, said we got reports of someone chasing someone with a baseball bat. Clearly can't, you clearly see I haven't got a bat. And now, I, now I'm fuming. And I was like, look, I ain't got a bat. And I started putting my knees up in the air to show that, do you know what I mean? The only place I could like logically have a bat would be down my trouser leg if I had one. So I'm lifting my legs up to show that there's, I can bend my legs. There's, I haven't got a fucking baseball bat. There's like, I'm going to, and then he's, um, he basically said, what's your name? Now I'm handcuffed at this point. What's your name? As I said, go oh, fuck yourself. Find me guilty for saying, and then I'll tell you my fucking name. Um, and he went, all right, I will. And now I'm fuming. I'm I'm calling them all cunts. Like I'm fucking fuming. Then this woman pulls up, and she like officer. And when she comes over, I said to her, "I'll talk to you, but I'm not talking to these two fucking divs no more." And uh, so now I'm talking to her, and she's saying we've had reports of someone with a baseball bat. And that thought, I'm just thinking, no, you haven't. You just wanted an excuse to stop and search me because you think I'm going to have something on me, and I haven't got anything on me, right? It was a complete over-the-top use of force. I didn't show any sign I was going to run. I, I was leaning on the lamppost. He come over. I didn't even show any signs that I wasn't going to um, comply with questions or anything. I was just standing there. And now I'm, oh, I'm fuming. He searched me, which I'd, I've been searched loads of times. But I haven't, I haven't had that for a while. I haven't had that since I was a lot younger. I mean, when I was younger, I used to get stopped by police all the time. But I've never been arrested. I ain't got a criminal record. But I used to get stopped all the time. Um, so I know how it works. I know how to handle it. Like, and to be honest, if he'd have just got out of the car and said, "What? Like, we've had reports of someone with a bat, mate. What's your name? I'd have told him my name. I ain't got nothing to hide. I'd have told him my name. I'd have let him search me. But to get out of the car and just handcuff someone over saying one line, like, no, yeah, so I'm fuming. And then basically I said to her, uh, he didn't find nothing. And he said to me at one point, why are you getting so high a rate? I was like, because you just fucking jumped out of a car and handcuffed me for nothing. What do you think I'm going to say? Thank you. You fucking idiot. He was just an idiot. I actually said to him, I think he was scared of me because I said to him, how old are you? And he went 24 and he answered me quick. And then went well, until later I was thinking, you ain't got to answer my questions. Why are you answering my questions? You should have said it's none of your business how old I am. But when he said 24, I was like, yeah, you're fucking right you are. Um, but yeah. So now they didn't find anything. They're trying to still talk to me like they're my mate and calm me down. I was like, look, take these fucking handcuffs off me now. And he went, all right, I will. Now he's fannying around with the lock. He can't get it open. So then this little Asian police officer, he come over, he unlocked them. And I just grabbed my stuff off the car. And I was like, you're all a bunch of fucking idiots. Grabbed my stuff off the car. 
And as I was walking off, the woman officer said, um, have a good evening. And I said, go fuck yourself, you cunts. And I got to the alley that comes into the estate. And I thought, do you know what? I'm not having that. I'm not having that. Like, I'm a man. I ain't a boy. You can't just treat me like that. That's not how you treat the general public. Just jump out and fucking handcuff them. Right? And then go through their pockets over you saying one line to me like that's meant to be. So I walked back up the road. The two police guys were still sat there. I tapped on his window. I said, put your fucking window down. Rolled down the window. I said, what's your name? PC Cox. I was like... Yeah, that sounds about fucking right. Took it on my phone. I was like, what's your badge number? Took his badge number. I said, what's your first name? Ellis. And I said to him, yeah, you got a fucking girl's name, you div. I said, and you're fucking lucky you've got a badge on, you cunt. And then I walked off. And that's how I know how I was in the right. And they was in, how they know they were in the wrong. Because of how I reacted. I was abusing them, basically. I basically bullied them. I bullied that boy who put handcuffs on me. and. They didn't do anything. And the reason they didn't do anything is because they knew that they had no legal grounds to actually stop and search me there. I don't even believe that they've actually did have a report. I think they just used that as an excuse to stop and search me. So anyway, the next day, I make some phone calls to the to what, uh, 101 it is here, not, um, which is a phone the police for non-emergencies. I said, I don't want to report one of your officers, PC Cox. I reported him. I'll get this phone call back from an officer. Couldn't be less in, interested in, in what I had to say. Hello, Mr. Lay. Literally, it was that tone. And he had that tone with me the whole time. So I think I ain't getting nowhere here. And he said, the team that stopped you will be on later. Or I'll pass it over to them. Why would you pass a complaint over to the team that did it? So anyway, I'll get a phone call from there higher up. No, no, mate, I've, I've saw the body cam and you was being dismissive. That's why you had to be handcuffed. I said, hold on, mate, I'll tell you now. I wasn't being dismissive until he handcuffed me. He didn't have no reason to handcuff me. Well, the tape shows otherwise. And I said to him, well, look, mate, at the end of the day, you, you prevented my right to film this situation. He did. Um, and... I would have had evidence that what he'd done was over the top, but he prevented it. I want his body cam footage. He said, we can't give you that. And then I looked up online, and they do. That was another lie he told me. I looked up online, and I've requested it. So once, so I will get that thing once the complaint's closed, they said. I've requested it off of them to have the body cam footage of me being stopped, so I'll pull it up on here when I get it. Um, and yeah. No, yeah, no, and I said, I was just not happy with that. I was like, because I know, I know how to how stops happen because I've been stopped thousands of times, and I've never been stopped like that, and I've never had a situation with police escalate like that. And the only reason it didn't escalate further was because of me, not the officer, because I stopped, because I stopped trying to record, because it was either going to be he's going to grab me up, and then I'm going to fuck the pair of them up, and I'm going to prison. Or just put my phone in my pocket and let him cuff me. I, I knew I had nothing, but I, I wasn't doing anything wrong. So I knew that if he cuffs me and all that, then he's going to be in the wrong. And it'd be just a waste of time for him. But yeah. So yeah, I said to that officer, I'm not happy with that, mate. I said, who's the highest person there? I am. I said, we'll send it higher then. He said, yeah, I can send it higher. I said, send it higher. We're done talking, mate, me and you. Because as far as I'm concerned, you two is part of the same team and you're going to cover for him. And he just talked to me like I was an idiot too. The first two police officers I spoke to about the complaint talked to me like I was an idiot. Third mate, he rings me. Now he's got a nice, much sweeter tone to him. Very, very nice speak. First person I spoke to that actually talked to me like I was a human being. Um, yeah. And he says... He actually confirmed, because I was saying, mate, I didn't do anything wrong. There was no reason for it. Well, like, we'd have to disagree about that. There was, because we had a description. And I said, mate, what was the description? I don't even believe you've had one. Can you prove that to me, can you? He says, well, I've got it written here, which that isn't proving it to me. That could have just come from their statements. And it was vague. It was, which is, this is why I think it was made up. 
uh, uh, like they had no description of the person that I was supposedly chasing, but conveniently enough, vaguely enough, it they said the description was someone chasing someone with a baseball bat with a light top and dark trousers. And that doesn't even add up anyway, because I had me grey hoodie there that, that's grey to there, and then the rest of it's black, so it technically... I didn't even have that. It was a very vague description. I said, mate, that's a very vague... Well, I'm sorry, mate, but that's the general public. I was like, yeah, but then you shouldn't act so sure of your vague descriptions that have been given to you. He jumped out the car and handcuffed me like he had his guy before he had off of a vague description over nothing that I did. Like that alley, the road where I was on, I said to him, I was like, mate, the road I was on has probably about 30 alleys that go into both estates. And I said to him, I was like, mate, I'm sure I know the estate better than them two officers did. It took them about 15 sec, 15 to 20 seconds from when I saw them to pull up and get out the car, maybe even half a minute. I had plenty of time to run. I didn't. I just stood there. I just stood there thinking they're going to get out. What are you doing down here? It's an isolated road. I get it. And I'll just say, while well, I'm there, I'm just walking on the phone to my girlfriend, whatever. Um, yeah, and then he escalated that thing, and then basically he said, "Well, I've reviewed the footage, and I was, and he, he and, I, and again he didn't mention anything about me kicking off. I kick, I was abusing them, all of them. They all got it, other than the Asian matey, because the Asian matey got out with the first policeman who cuffed me. He never touched me once. I don't think, I don't think he did, but he literally just stood there at the side, and I actually said to him, I was like, you're all right, mate.'" I ain't got a problem with you. It's this fucking idiot. So then anyway, that third person, even though he, um, he, what's the word? Uh, basically, the things he said to me, the third person said to me, made what the second officer said to me a lie. The second officer said I was being dismissive. That's why I was being handcuffed. He said he was going to detain me. And I said, no, you're not. I, I said that once the handcuff had been clipped on. I did not kick off. And and the, the third mate I spoke to confirmed that. And he said, and I said, well, what do we do now, mate? Because I'm not happy with that. And he says, well, and he was actually really nice. And I said to him, mate, you're the first person I spoke to that's actually spoke to me like I'm a human being out of your whole police thing. And he says, well, what I'll do, mate, if you're not happy, I will send your, um, I'll send you an email, um, and in, just send me back an email and write your complaint of, he's like, this isn't a complaint of the stop. He's like, but just put in there about the stop saying why you don't think handcuffs was needed and why it, he's like, because that is a sharp force, but we think it's warranted. It wasn't warranted. It was warranted because they had a vague description that kind of matched me. That's not warranted to jump out and just fucking handcuff me when I wasn't being aggressive or anything. Um, and like I say, if they was in their legal right to do that, they would have arrested me for kicking off because I did abuse them. Um, so yeah, now it's at the point where I said, well, what do we do now? He sent me the email. I wrote him back my complaint and I told him step by step, um, well, to first off, told them why I think uh, they didn't need to cuff me, which they didn't need to cuff me. It was a complete over-the-top use of force. Um, and then my complaint with how the complaint has been handled. So I did. I went step by step. And, and I was, yeah, so that's where we're up to at the minute. But then he, he said to me, he said, you won't get... He said, you won't get the body cam. You can request the body cam footage, but you won't get it until the case is closed. That was another thing I think was um, trying to uh, put me off, keep going with it. But then uh, there's two other things as well. The second officer did. The second officer I spoke to, um, he said, I've heard PC Cox's side. And I'm going to let you have your side. So I'm thinking we're going to have a conversation about this. Oh, no. I said what happened, my side of it. And then he's, his words afterwards was, yeah, that's exactly word for word what you said in your statement. Of course it fucking is. It's the truth. I'm telling the truth. And then I realized he only asked me my side to see if there was any inconsistencies in my statement 
to make my complaint invalid. But there wasn't. Because what I said was the truth. <coughs> and when he started saying I was dismissive, um, on, on the, the footage shows that me being dismissive, which is a lie. I wasn't dismissive. I'm not dismissive to police officers. I'm not, I'm not one of them people that does it, does that shit. So I know how I act and I know how I am with police. So I know he's, that's a lie. Um, and when I said, scoop me, mate, I wasn't dismissive until he already put the handcuffs on me. Uh, and then I, I interrupted saying that and he said, excuse me, sir, if you keep interrupting me, we're not going to get anywhere. And I think he done that. To make me go, who do you think you're fucking talking to? Because from the tape, it would look like I'm a raving lunatic. Right. Because I'm screaming, shouting at the police. I was basically told him he's lucky he had a badge. Right. Um, yeah. But I will get that. I will get that CCTV, not the CCTV, the body cam footage. Uh. So I, I honestly think the second officer I spoke to was he was trying to make my statement inconsistent by getting me to say it again. And he was trying to ruffle my feathers and get me to kick off at him so he could then make the complaint, oh, he's just a crazy, aggressive person. And I'm not. I don't have a record of that. I don't have a police record at all. And I've been stopped. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've been stopped. I've probably been stopped for since I was 10 till about... I'd say probably about 20, something. Yeah, I don't really know. But like kind of when you get a bit older, police don't tend to bother you as much. It does seem to be when you're older. But I haven't had that shit since I was like younger. Like I mean, it used to be a daily occurrence. But then when I was growing up, they had stop and search powers. They could just get out the car and stop and search you. They don't have that now. And I said to the last policeman on the phone, I said, you don't have stop and search powers. Do you? And he said, well, we have to have some grounds and we had grounds to search you. No, you didn't. And and maybe legally you did. Maybe you legally had a right to stop and search me. But to get out of the car and handcuff me when... And I said to him, I was like, as far as I'm concerned, mate, your police officer saw the size of me and was scared. He was intimidated by my size and not my actions. And the third policeman said, I think you're right. He said, I've watched the body cam footage and you're... He said, you are a big fella. I said, I am. I, I, and this isn't, this isn't a boast or anything, but these, I'm not joking, these two old Bill was like there and there on me. And when they grabbed me, it was like a kerfuffle to grab my hand and they didn't actually even do anything. I let them. I let them cuff me. And if you can't arrest me against my will, you shouldn't be allowed to be a policeman. I'm sorry. Because I let them do that. But there's plenty of boys around here and plenty of people with my family that would put a fucking beat the shit out of the pair of them, old Bill. Put the pair of them in hospital. And quite frankly, PC Cox is a danger. If he's going to jump out and get intimidated and get scared in the moment and just handcuff someone like that. He only handcuffed my first wrist. I let him do my second one. He'd done the little sneaky <coughs> where you're not even noticing they're doing it. Yeah. And then I gave him my other hand. I put my other hand behind my back just because I didn't want... Well, to be honest, I didn't want him fucking putting me on the floor and fucking thinking he's Robocop and he's a hero. Do you know what I mean? But whoever he's working with, he'll put them in danger, especially around here, because he'll do that to the wrong fucking boy. Like If it, if it wasn't me he'd stopped and someone else, he'd have been in for a very different fucking... And there was a, another policeman who pulled up as a backup policeman when he called backup saying I was resisting. This policeman I could see in his eyes straight away. He was a mean motherfucker. Right? And he was he was the backup police. He was there to sort motherfuckers out. But when he walked over, I said, here, mate, you want to send this fucking div back to police school, don't you? I like, don't know what he's doing. And he just like kind of assessed the situation. He was there for two seconds. He didn't even talk to any of the other officers. He, he just looked around. So he, he assessed the situation. And I think personally, if he'd have stopped me, I'd have never got put in handcuffs. I probably wouldn't have even been searched. But because that boy, and he was a boy, was scared. Yeah. But that was my new year. And 
my New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And then the days following afterwards, because it took them, I probably went through three days of complaining about the police. But to be fair about that situation, it did take, take the sting out of me losing £339. <laughs> I have to say that. Well, because that was big in my head. And then after that, I was just fuming, fuming with the police. All right. But yeah, that's my New Year's Eve and New Year's Day story. And I will get that video. It might take them a while because I'll, uh, if they buoy me off again, the police, I'll, I'll just phone the solicitors. Because um, I'm not having it. I ain't a fucking kid anymore. And I'm not having it. I'm not some little idiot around the estate. Because the other reason why I'm not having it and the other reason why I am complaining is because... There's boys around here that will let a policeman do it because they don't know that they ain't allowed to fucking do that shit. Like, they've just become accustomed to getting handcuffed and getting searched. So it's so commonplace for them that they think they can just do it to anyone. And no, you can't. No, you can't, PC Cox. But anyway, that was, yeah, that was my New Year's Day. And in the next two days, I just stayed inside. <laughs> well, it comes in free. I'm going to stay inside until this fucking bad luck run I'm on ends. And not only during all of this, fucking ill as fuck. But yeah. But yeah, there you go. There's a little Rory story time for you. Sweet. <laughs>